While discussions about U.S. housing prices are common, another crucial aspect of the housing market often goes unnoticed, rent. For those who don't own their homes, renting is the necessary alternative, and historically, the relationship between sale prices and rents has been remarkably consistent. This ratio has shown a clear pattern when analyzed. The sale price to rent ratio has generally been stable, but deviations from this trend have typically foreshadowed market corrections. For example, the ratio stood at 93 in 1970, fluctuating modestly throughout the 1980s and 1990s. However, in the late 1990s, this ratio began to rise sharply, indicating that housing prices were outpacing rents significantly. This disparity continued in the 2000s, culminating in the housing market crash of 2007, where a dramatic correction in housing prices occurred. These statistics underscore a clear relationship. When the sale price to rent ratio strays significantly from historical norms, it often singles a pending adjustment in the market. So is this where we're headed? Right now, the ratio reads 134, which is actually higher than what we saw during the peak of the 2007 bubble. So naturally, the question on everyone's mind is simple. Does this massive mountain mean that a cliff is awaiting for us in the near future? After all, if we look at the early 2000s, this is exactly what occurred. Well, the easy answer to this question is pretty simple, and it's based on a simple mathematical concept of mean reversion. Mean reversion is a concept that simply suggests that high or low extremes tend to return to their long-term average over time. The data going back to the 1970s indicates that this ratio hovered around here. Now, as you can tell, we've gone completely off the charts, and I can show you a specific example of this that will make you question the sanity of this market. In California, for example, a typical house the defined by this data set as a mid-tier home would cost someone around $5,900 per month given today's interest rates and a 10% down payment. This is up from around $3,000 a month in 2017. It's so bad in California, the median household income doesn't even come close to qualifying for a loan that will allow you to purchase a bottom tier house, let alone something a little nicer. If you read into the requirements, you actually need a household income that exceeds $235,000 to even begin to qualify for a mid-tier home. Even experts like Bill McBride acknowledge that what is happening today is far beyond normal. He took the time to graph real home prices over the last 50 years, and what this chart shows is home prices adjusted for inflation, meaning that this shows the real price of a house with inflation numbers stripped out. And as you can see, we are actually 10% higher than the last peak which occurred over 17 years ago. McBride even says there is an upward slope to real house prices and it has been over 17 years since the previous peak, but real prices are historically high. So now back to the whole price versus rent debate. In 2004, Fed economist John Craner and researcher whose name I can't pronounce that's flashed on screen wrote a Fed letter on price to rent ratios. You can read the whole thing, it's linked in the description Below. But one key aspect of this letter is found in the fifth paragraph, and what it says is the fundamental value of a house is the present value of the future housing service flows that it provides to the marginal buyer. In a well-functioning market, the value of the housing service flow should be approximated by the rental value of the house. What John is saying here is that in a perfect market where everything is fair and open, the amount you could rent a house for is a good way to guess how much the house is actually worth. And if we head back to Bill McBride and look at his price to rent ratio chart, we can see that the price to rent index is off 7.5% from the recent peak. And by this measure, housing prices are severely elevated. But there is, of course, the other side to this story. In the Fed paper from 2004, it's pretty clear that the economists and researcher aren't really sure that this ratio is a good visual for identifying a bubble. Towards the seventh paragraph, the authors begin to explain why something like price to rent may be a mirage. What they say is essentially this. It's easy to think that a bubble in the housing market is just when the price rent ratio stays above its usual level for a long time. Something we see here on this chart. However, figuring out how big and how long these changes need to be to actually call it a bubble isn't clear cut. The ratio of price to rent doesn't always stay the same even when there's no bubble. For example, the authors reference economists Campbell and Schiller who wrote in 1988 that this ratio might go up if people expect rents, dividends from owning houses, to increase or money they make from selling the house later, otherwise known as returns, to decrease, or both. 
And they give an example, a real life situation. Imagine a real estate market near a military base that's going to close in five years. The upcoming job losses from the closure will likely decrease the demand for housing in the area, lowering the future benefits or dividends you get from owning a house there, which would cause house prices to drop now. However, current rent prices might not change much yet because the base closure is still a few years away, so the price rent ratio would go down. On the other hand, if the government promised to cut and keep real estate taxes low forever, more people might want to buy houses because it's cheaper to own a home. This would increase the demand for housing. Plus, if people feel more certain about future tax rates being low, they might see houses as safer investments, which would likely decrease the need for high returns from these investments. In this scenario, the price-rent ratio would go up. So based on this, it could very well be that the market is just signaling that dividends or rents in a state like California could go up in future years. And as wild as that sounds to many of you, let's not forget that California is a state that has seen the pendulum swing many times over. In the last 40 years alone, it has gone through some massive swings, both politically, economically, and culturally. And if you live long enough, you will see things turn around 180 degrees in ways that you wouldn't believe. While in the media, a state like California is seen as a failure, there's always optimism that 10 years from now, things will look a whole lot different. Just look at New York in the 1970s, Detroit in the 1950s, Austin over the past few years, and New Orleans. These were cities that either thrived at a certain time, then fell on bad times, or the exact opposite. The conclusion here is that you never know when something will make a turnaround, or if an act of nature will simply wipe it off the map, as was the case with New Orleans. Cities, states, countries, they live and breathe and make comebacks all the time, and the opposite is true as well. Things like this affect the variables we talked about earlier, and the market changes with them. So essentially what I'm trying to say here is that price to rent may look bad right now, but we really don't know how bad it has to get in order for a bubble to form. It could very well be that this ratio can far exceed what anyone thinks is normal and those who are calling for a bubble, they can be wrong for decades. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments below what you think about this ratio. Are we in a bubble or is this yet another pointless statistic that has no bearing on the unbelievable market we are witnessing right now?